Okay, uh, so let's dive deep uh, a little bit uh, into the AWS cloud computing. Uh, so basically, uh, there are four layers. So um, at the infrastructure level, so they provide AWS deploy their infrastructures in multiple regions. And within each region, um, there are a multiple availability zones. And in addition to those availability zones, they also provide edge locations so that they can deliver your contents faster uh, to your client. They also have the foundation services that for compute, uh, networking, and also for storage. And they also have the platform services. For example, they provide some services for the databases, for the data analytics. And you can also build your app, uh, deploy or manage your online resources. And also there are some, some services that are for mobile services. And they also provide applications. Those are very uh, useful, especially nowadays that uh, we are doing all the work from home. So for example, you have the virtual desktops and also have the collaboration and also sharing those applications. OK, so first, let's talk about those regions and also availability zones. So those are the AWS that provide their infrastructures all over the world. So although Amazon is a company in the United States, they uh, create and also uh, build their in infrastructures all over the entire world. So right now, those are the, they have multiple regions. And for example, they have regions in the United States and or China and also the other countries. So why do we need multiple regions? So, so the reason is simple. So uh, when you when the companies are doing their business, their clients can be anywhere. So for example, that we have a company that in United States, but the client is in China. OK. Uh, so if you build a service that for your client in China, for example, if you are going to create a website, uh, you can, of course, choose provide your website in the region of the United States because that is easier for you to maintain the infrastructure. But your client in China will visit the website from China to the website that is located in the United States. There will be some delays that when they transmit the data over the internet. Okay, um, so your user may receive, will have a slower response. So every time they make queries, they refresh your website. So there will be a, a tiny delay. But in some cases, even those tiny, a few second delay will make a huge difference. So in deter, depending on what business you're running. So Another, so that's why that we have multiple regions. So another choice is that, okay, so you can choose the region that in China. So for example, uh, this one. So if you build your server in China and the users in China can access the infra infrastructure in that region, so that will be faster for your clients and also for your, uh, for the users. Okay, so that will help will be helpful for your business. So that's why that we have the multiple regions. Within each region, there are at least two availability zones or AZs. Okay, so at least two AZs per each region. So for example, this is a region in the uh, uh, Northern Virginia. Okay, so Northern Virginia. In Northern Virginia, uh, we have three, A for example, we have three AZs, so AZ A, B, and C. So those AZs are located in different geographic places. So for example, uh, this one probably is in Harrisonburg, and this one is in uh, Richmond, and uh, that in Northern, not Northern Virginia, but for example, in Virginia. So this is in Charlottesville. Actually, no one knows exact locations of those AZs. 
So the reason we have multiple AZs is because we want to have additional copies of your services, all of your resources. So for example, if you have a database that in the Richmond, that is a must database, and all the others are the secondary database. And for some reason, there is an instant enrichment, for example, might be an earthquake, uh, and the database is uh, that region, for example, out of power, entire Richmond out of power, although they have backup power plants, but for example, an earthquake, so or, or a natural disaster. So in that case, uh, your database in the Harrisonburg will become from secondary into the master. OK, so your client will be able still be able to access your data uh, through those backups. OK, so in that case, you will not lose your business. You are not your business will not be interrupted. So AZs provide backups of your data and the regions can make sure that you can deliver your content to your uh, client or to your audience faster. Of course, you can also use regions as backup. So for example, if you have something that is super, super important, uh, you can have backup in this region, a backup in this region, and also a backup in this region. So you can also do that, but the cost will be higher. OK, so those are the infrastructures. Uh, foundational services. Uh, so AWS provides those foundational services for compute, for network, storage, security, and also for applications. Uh, so as I said, we are not going to uh, the, uh, to cover each single services. So in this class, we will talk about EC2. So that is the foundation of all the AWS services. Uh, we will talk about VPC for the network. We will talk about S3. So that is actually the data lake. OK, S3. And we will talk about the IAM okay, for the security and identity. Uh, we will not cover anything in the applications in this class. OK, so we will talk those later. Um, for the platform services, uh, we will talk about the RDS. So that is a relational database. Uh, we will talk about the Redshift. So that is a data warehouse. Uh, we will talk about Athena. So that is data analytics uh, for, the, uh, for data that is on S3 that we just mentioned. Uh, we'll cover the EMR, so that is for the big data. Uh, we also will talk about the quick site, so that is the data visualization tools that is provided on AWS. Um, for the other like application services, management, developer, mobile services, IOTs, uh, so that is out of scope of this class. So we will not touch the other stuff. Um, so we are focused on, on those applications in this class. OK, uh, so let's talk about EC2 very briefly. So that is also uh, in this today's lab, we, are, we will also use EC2 as an example. So EC2 stands for the Elastic Computer Cloud. That is basically a, a virtual computer that in the cloud. So you can think about an EC2 instance as a computer that in the cloud that you can use that computer to do anything you like. So you can host a website, you can calculate uh, your data, or you can use that one for a database. OK. Uh, so for the EC2s, so that you can use a web service interface to launch instances. So you can use any operating system like Windows, uh, uh, Mac, or Linux. You can also build your customer application environment. Uh, so for example, you can use that for website, uh, machine learning, etc. You can also manage your network access permissions. So does do you allow anyone to access your instance or do you allow just specific person or specific resources or specific other EC2s to access your EC2 instance? You can also build your 
Amazon Machine Images. So Amazon Machine Images is like, for example, if you have a website, okay, and that is configured on an EC2 instance, and you can make an image, AMI, okay. So you can deploy this one to other EC2 instance, okay. So when you deploy that one, so the other EC2 instance will have the same website configurations as you did for this one. And the reason you want to do that is that, for example, in that case, you can put this one in one AZ and you can put that one in another AZ, so as a backup. Okay, so those are the AIMRs. And that is also the reason that why we think the AWS is a leader in the cloud computing uh, uh, services. So EC2 is a foundation on which most AWS services are built upon. Okay, so all the other services you can think that as a customized EC2 instance. So for example, the RDS, okay, that's your database, which is a customized EC2 instance that is for database only. Okay, and if you look at this chart, you can see that AWS provides the most powerful EC2 instance or the most powerful uh, cloud infrastructures than the other uh, providers, like faster than powerful more than Microsoft and also Google. Okay, so that is why that right now AWS is still the leader uh, in the cloud uh, providers. Okay, uh, let's also talk briefly talk about VPC. So VPC is a virtual pro private cloud. So that basically means that you can connect multiple resources together uh, within a VPC. So you can have your personal uh, cloud or personal network in the cloud. So by using VPCs, you can create the subnet, okay? So which means that you can define a range of your IP addresses. Uh, you can also control the access to your applica applications. So this is one example of the VPC. So here we have the internet, public internet, and we have the customer network. So probably your network where you have your own business information. And let's say that you want to build a website that to display your data to, to the public internet. So here you can use the AWS. On AWS, you can build your own VPC, so virtual cloud where you have one public subnet to host your web servers. So those web servers can be each EC2 uh, instance. OK, so here you have two web servers. And you have another private subnet that to run as your app servers. So app servers is like to do the calculations, to compute, to make queries that can return the result to your web server. App server uh, will receive data from your customer network and return the result uh, through the gateways to your uh, web server and also web server will develop, di display the result to the public internet. Uh, you also have another uh, subnet that hosts your databases like RDS, which is on the private subnet that is only accessible to you. Okay, so you can host your data on this VPC. And so that is on your database. And here you can see here we have multiple uh, instances. So for example, probably you put this one into different AZs, AZ1 and also AZ2. Okay, and this one you can have also different AZ1 and also AZ2. Okay. So those are in, for example, those are in one regions. And for your web servers, you can also put that into two regions. For example, this one serves uh, the client in United States. And this one, you put that one in a different region that server the client in China. Okay. So that is an example of the VPC. And lastly, let's talk about the IAM. So 
identity and also access management. So in IAM, you can define an IAM user or you can define an IAM rules. So IAM users allow person to access your resources. Uh, you can also group multiple users as an IAM group. An IAM rules allow the other services. So for example, you have a EC2 instance, uh, you have an RDS instance, okay? And you have another user, okay? So if you give this user an access, so that will by using the IAM user. So this user is able to maintain access your EC2 instance and also probably also is able to access your RDS. So that is by using gives them and define an IAM user. IAM rules so allows uh, the other resources to access your uh, cloud resources. So for example, in this case, you define an, an IAM rules for this EC2 instance. So that allow this EC2 instance to access your RDS database. Okay, so that is a different type of IAM policies. You can define IAM users and also you can define IAM rules. So in this weeks or in this today's lab, so we will you launch an EC2 instance so that it can build up a website and you will see that uh, so that will make more sense that how you will see how the VPC will work and uh, how we can define access to your uh, to your website.